Hey y'all, I wanna fry up me some okra, but you know what? I don't have enough buttermilk. So I'm gonna show y'all how I do it when I don't have enough buttermilk. I'm gonna put a little water in here. I'm gonna put a little water in here and add this, but I'm also gonna add what I normally don't add, I'm gonna add an egg. So let me show y'all how I do that. Now you don't necessarily have to cut the tips off of your okra, but you know, when you, when, when you see something as you were growing up as a child, you just tend to do it. So sometimes when I um, um, uh, roast my okra, I just cut the okra this way and then just lay it on a sheet pan with salt and pepper, olive oil, and put it in the oven and roast it. But today I want some fried okra because okra, I want that crunch. So I'm gonna cut off the tips and cut off the end and then cut it up like so and put it in there. But in this container, I have whatever little milk I had, which is not enough. But I'm going to add an egg because I want to make sure that my breading sticks to this okra because I want that crunch, y'all. I want that crunch. So that's how I'm going to mix it up. So I've got the egg in here and I've added a few shots of uh, hot sauce. Use whatever can you have. I'm going to mix this up and then get this over on the okra and let it soak for a few minutes. And then because I don't have any fish fry, I got to make my own uh, frying stuff. So I'll show you how I do that also. Looks like I'm almost out of cornmeal too. So I got a little cornmeal and just a little flour. I didn't measure it. I bet that's probably about a cup and a half of cornmeal to about a half a cup of flour, I'm guessing. I'm just using my eyeballs. I'm gonna mix that up and I'm gonna add some salt, pepper, and cayenne to this. And then I'm gonna taste it because that's how you know it's how it's gonna taste, y'all. That's what people miss out on. They won't even taste their breading. Once you get your seasonings and your breading, you get it mixed up real good and you make sure you taste it. Taste it because however it tastes here is how it's gonna taste when it gets on that okra. Okay? Okay. So after you get all your spices mixed up, whatever you're gonna use, you taste it. And it's spicy and it's got enough seasoning salt to it. It's got the pepper to it. You, could, you should be able to taste all the spices that you put in here and it's good. All right, all right. So this is kind of what I do after I get it breaded and all of them are not perfect, but that's okay. You just get the breading on where you can and then get your oil heated up and then start dropping them in the fryer. Okay. Okay. Do I need to go to the grocery store? <laughs> I don't have a lot of grease either. Okay. <laughs> but that's how they look. They actually ready. See? And on a couple of them, all of the coating didn't take, and that's okay, y'all. That's really, it really is okay. Calm down, okay? Okay. So what typically happens with me is that as I'm frying okra, I start to eat okra. And so, <laughs> when it's time for the display, there ain't much okra left. Now, when you fry okra, I'm gonna make sure. I'm gonna make sure. So if you think it's cooking too fast, if you adjust your heat, there's nothing wrong with you adjusting your heat and moving the okra around a little bit, okay? Okay. Here we go, y'all. That's our fried okra. I always want y'all to eat with me. So what I did was I threw together a kale and dandelion salad. I don't know if y'all see that. I talked about dandelion the other day and how dandelion, the old people used to say dandelion would clean your blood. And I told y'all about the neighborhood drunk when I was growing up, Kid Charlie. He used to be in the streets directing traffic, but he was drunk and I heard my mama and some other ladies talk about, all Kid Charlie need to do is just go out in that yard and get some dandelion, that'll clean his blood. But dandelion, even for me, somebody who eats a lot of dark leafy greens that are bitter, like I'm chewing it now, dandelion is so bitter, y'all. The okra does its job because what you're wanting from the okra it's the crunch. That's what you're wanting. So I made the salad. Dandelion, kale, 
and just some red onions with a squeeze of lemon. Now y'all also know I am not a believer in massaging greens. I don't believe you have to massage kale, collards, any of those dark leafy greens. All you gotta do is squeeze some ash on them, like a lemon or lime, and let it sit for a few minutes and it will cut that bitter bite. But ain't nothing cutting the bitter bite of dandelion, nothing. So you gotta grin and bear with that. But in addition to that, I put olive oil on it, salt and pepper, and a little cayenne, and then I topped it with mango. And the mango is helping counteract the sweetness, I mean, the bitterness of the dandelion with the sweetness of the mango, and it's a really good salad. And so hopefully, mango. I'm cleaning my blood while I'm also getting something delicious that I love. I love fried okra. I love fried green tomatoes. I just had fried green tomatoes the other day out at a restaurant. I love them. But I know that we're not supposed to eat a lot of fried food, but my okra, if I didn't either roast it or fry it today, it was probably getting ready to go bad on me, so I wanted to make, I don't like throwing away food, y'all. So, I wanted to cook it before it went bad. And I didn't feel like roasting it, so I wanted to show y'all how to fry it real quick. Even when you don't have fish fry, even when you don't have enough cornmeal, even when you don't have a whole bunch of oil. Because <laughs> I fried it in all of those conditions. I'm, I'm pretty much out of everything. But I fried it. It turned out perfect. And this is a delicious salad that I'm getting ready to go. Enjoy. So, that's what I wanted to share with y'all today. It's good. Y'all want to make it a great day. Mm. And I will see y'all on the next vi video. I'm Val Taylor. Bye now. I'm a growler.